everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make a tunnel fold card. Now, my inspiration has actually come from this tunnel card from the 1950s. So I, in one of my What Did I Get videos a couple of weeks ago, I shared a lot of vintage cards that I'd purchased, and one of them was this one, but I put it to one side and I didn't share the inside because I wanted to keep it as a surprise. So my inspiration has come from this card, and basically when you open it up, it reveals this. Um, so you have these different levels, so it's as if you're like, kind of like, I guess, looking through a tunnel. That's how, you know, that's where I guess the modern name for it has come from. I'm not sure what they would have called it back then, but anyway. So really straightforward to do. Today's card's going to be five by seven, and this is the one that I've done. So the front is plain because I haven't really finished that kind of bit there. It's just, it's just going to say happy birthday, but this is how it will look. There's not going to be much going on because all the fun is inside. But when you open it up, this is what I've done. So mine's slightly different. I've gone for this underwater theme. I've added acetate to both levels. So there's acetate on this one and on the one on the front. And it's just, I love it. It's really good. I love this die set anyway. Um, you've got lots of room here to write your message. Alternatively, you can write your message on the back. It all folds completely flat, fitting into a five by seven envelope. And then basically it stays open like this. So all of your hard work is you know constantly on show. Um, the mirrored cardstock, the holographic cardstock is just all brilliant. I think it works really really well and it's very similar in terms of the theme and everything to the shadow floating shadow box card I think it was I shared. So I know a lot of you have this die set so I will link up the card there as well. If anybody's new you've not seen that one do check it out because it's a really fun card. But I just love how this works. I love how it stands up and it all folds flat. So let me show you how to make it. Okay, so first of all we need to prepare our card. So you need one piece that is ten and a quarter by seven. Okay, so if you do want to make this smaller, then just reduce your seven inch side to whatever height you want it. So along the ten and a quarter inch side, you want to score at five inches, then at nine inches, and then at ten inches. Okay? Fold all of those. I'd already gone ahead and done this, obviously check everything was going to be okay. And that is how we're going to have it. So you want this side up, and this is going to be our little tab, which we're going to attach our next piece to. And this piece, once it all folds down, you'll see there, it becomes the, they're both the same width. Okay, so that is our kind of main, I guess, outer case. Then this is the piece that goes inside. And this piece here, I don't think it matters which way, no. Okay, so this is a piece of eight and three quarters by seven. So again, reduce the seven inch down if you do want to shrink it. And you're going to score at four inches, four and a half inches, and eight and a half inches. You should have a small little quarter of an inch tab there. And again, fold all of those score lines like so. Okay. Okay, next, before we stick this down, you want to create your windows. Now, I am going to use this die cut here, and I'm going to have it slightly further up towards the top than the bottom, because I'm going to, although saying that, I'm now thinking that I'm going to add in this one here again, which says, you're amazing, um, which could look quite nice there. So actually, I'm going to have mine more towards the bottom. So I've just change that. You want to make sure as well that you've got it with the quarter inch tab on the left hand side here. OK, because this is that first one that we looked down. Now I'm sticking my tape here on the inside card. Although this is low tack purple tape, if anything was to rip, it would rip on this piece here that I don't want to keep. OK, so now I'm going to run that through my die machine. Now, obviously, this is seven inches in width. So if you if any of you have got the smaller die machines, then obviously you're not going to be able to run it through. But what I would say is because this is metal is lie it down. You can either draw around it with a pencil and then cut it with your cutting knife or you can go straight in and use this as a ruler and cut it with your cutting knife that way. OK, so there's or you can use scissors, do a cross and then cut it out that way. So this, you know, everybody can still do this, but um, yeah, if you haven't got the wider die machines, then you will have to cut it. Okay, so I've just cut that one out. Obviously keep these, these are always nice to use on other cards because they're perfect, obviously cut rectangles there. So now, again, if I bring this back, so we're gonna fold that one over. Also, when you cut it, you wanna make sure that you leave space for this little tab here, because that's gonna stick 
over here like that you don't want that tab showing you know in the window that you've created okay so already now I'm really pleased with where I have this one next we need to create that again on this piece so you're going to be cutting now on this side I mean you can obviously cut that side it doesn't matter but you're going to be cutting on this side here so because I can't obviously lie that down and have it completely straight I'm going to bring up the side so this is nice and straight here and then with my pencil I'm just going to do a line down here very lightly this is all going to get covered anyway and most of it's going to get cut out and I think that's about it and I'm going to do one a little pencil mark there and that is just a guide now for me to lie this one down okay so I can see that is the inside so it's going to be about there that looks about right so again just going to use the same purple tape okay so keep them they're always handy put them to one side okay so now we have this piece all prepared just score those again burnish those score lines if you're cutting it probably best to burnish fully after anyway so again, now, make sure I've got this all going the right way. Yeah, it was that way. <laughs> so that is going to stick on here. That one is going to stick there. And already now you can see we've got this tunnel appearing. Okay, so now I'm ready to add my acetate. So you want your acetate to be obviously wider, wide enough to cover whatever the square or rectangle, you know, whatever your window size is but no larger than four inches because this is the width of this section here. So these are four inches wide. So this is three and three quarters by six and that will cover my frame. So I'm just gonna pop some red tape on the outer sides. Okay, so now this piece, again, you want it to stick. So you've got your tab on the right hand side that's folded up towards you and I'm going to stick my acetate um, on the back side. I'm just thinking, because obviously this is going to be oh, the side that's hidden. So I'm going to stick it on this back side here. Just make sure it's all covered. Gone more to the one side than the other, but as long as it's all within that section, it will be fine. Make sure all your air bubbles are out. Okay, let's fold that all round. There we go, perfect. So that is gonna stick inside there and you can't see any of the glue or anything because it's hidden on the back piece there, which obviously will be completely concealed. But now when that catches the light, I think it's gonna look really good. So before we stick this in, you wanna decide what you're gonna have on your very back. So I've cut this piece here, which is from this paper pack here, which was the one that I shared recently. It's called Fresh Feelings, three pound from the works. It's a really nice nautical theme. So I've just selected, oh, where is it? This one here. Thought it was really nice with the waves and everything. So that's my background piece. So I'm gonna stick that one down. Okay, and this one measures just slightly short of four inches. So it's, it's about three and seven eighths. Okay, and then again, it's just shy of seven inches tall. So I wanted it to cover the whole section. So you can see there when I bring up my size, it's, there's no frame. It completely covers that section. Um, but if you do want to have a bit of a frame, then by all means bring that in. But now once you start building this together, how cool is this going to look? So there is my C right in the background there. So now you have to decide whether you want to have anything here so you know you're going to be adding that over the top so you need to kind of think about what's going to be in your real kind of background area now i have started cutting some bits and pieces out so i've gone ahead and cut all of these not really knowing what's going to go where but i think i'm going to have one of my fish right at the very back now i've cut this actually on some fun foam so it's already got dimension but i think i might have like one of these right at the very back. So what I would say is at this point, before you stick it down, you do have to start kind of planning out your scene because the last thing you want to do is stick that down and then when you get to something at the very front, you hate where you've positioned something, for example, right at the back um, and you can't obviously take it all apart. But I think I'm going to have the, just one fish on the very, very back and then these bits here, I want to be 
kind of floating more. So I've got this, look how cute the little narwhal is. And I've put him on some white foam adhesive. So again, he's raised, but I think I want him kind of like this. Okay, so you can kind of see, so he's already now floating. And then I'm gonna be probably, I'm gonna have this shell down here and then my mermaid is gonna come here. Now I haven't cut her yet, but I already can tell, I think he's gonna to have to go higher. I'm probably gonna move that fish up a little bit more. Yeah, so already now that's starting to, as long as I've got that rough one there where I want it, because the mermaid's gonna go here and then I'm gonna have my sign up there, which should all be fine. And then these bits are gonna go on this one, which is, you know, we can do as and when. And I've also got a lovely little seahorse here, which I might have maybe just kind of popping up there behind the shell, actually on the very front. So I'm gonna stick down this little fish here. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So next we are gonna start sticking everything into place. So what you need to do is with a pencil, you need to mark one inch from coming out from this score line here. You wanna just put a pencil mark at one inch. So I'm gonna mark one inch out, which is there. And then I'm gonna draw just a faint, well, enough for you to see it, but you just wanna do, don't push too down too much because you will rub this out. That is a guideline now for where we're gonna stick this side piece. That side piece needs to stick right up to that pencil line so it becomes the same height as this one inch side here, okay? And that will give you an equal half an inch here and then a half an inch there, okay? So what you wanna do first of all is we're gonna stick it and attach it to this piece. So with some red tape, I'm going to run this all the way up that tab. And it's a quarter inch tab, so this quarter inch tape works really well. Again, make sure all your air bubbles are out. And then I'm going to add more red tape to that inside piece. So you wanna make sure that you're sticking it. You've got your quarter inch tab underneath sticking up. The one with no tab is here on the right hand side and then the left hand side of that half inch is where you wanna add your sticky tape. Or you can use wet glue as well. Again, if you're worried that you're not gonna maybe stick this straight or something, then use wet glue, because again, it will give you that wiggle room. But I'm hoping that <laughs> I'm gonna do this okay and I can go straight in with the red tape. Okay, so first of all, just uh, take your backing off of this side, okay. And then we'll open this one out and you're going to stick it down. I think I'm going to bring mine up so I can see it better that way. So I'm going to just concentrate on one end first. And again, it's all the right measurements, so it should marry up nicely. Turn that one over. Just go over that. Like so. So now it becomes this really long piece. So that way, at the minute, you've got everything now here on the right hand side. And then you fold that under like this, okay? So what we need to do before we stick that one, is we're gonna add tape and we need to get this one stuck in place. Now this one here is gonna stick within your half inch section. So, and what you're gonna do is you wanna fold this piece right over so that the tape here that you've stuck down is facing up. And basically that will sit with that folded piece over here, this quarter inch tab, when it's folded over, it will sit exactly halfway between that other one inch section. So, and that will mean that you've got, the, the card is you know not only lined up, but it's gonna lie flat when you pop it in the envelope. So, I've just taken the backing off. I'm gonna fold all of that over first so I can see this piece. And then start from the top, make sure that tab is folded under and just lie that all down flat, like so. Okay, and now when you bring it up, you have a perfect little kind of section there, window. When you go to stick this side over, and we're gonna line it up with that pencil line, you can see our card is all coming together and it should, fingers crossed, <laughs> it's gonna look really good. So now I'm gonna take the backing off of this and all you need to do, actually, I just thought you don't need to have, yes you do. 
because we're going to do, no you don't need a pencil mark there, because if you just fold over so you've got that hide folded over, and you can lie it all down, but again the pencil is good, there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with having that there, and it completely gets hidden now anyway, so no one will ever know it's there, and it's helped us, like so. And now, we've got a really cool tunnel fold. Love, love, love this. I think it's so fun, and when it closes it's your nice 5 by 7 card size. How cool is that? So next it's all down to decorating. This is where I'm going to have my message so I will be cutting some mats and layers for that and I'm going to stamp a fun image. I think I'm going to decorate the side here. I'm going to die cut bits and pieces for this. I need to do all my mats and layers for the front and you can also have somewhere on the back if you'd rather write your message there and continue your theme and decoration and stuff there as well. So I'm going to crack on and get all that ready. Okay, so I have changed things up a bit. So I started to do this one and just something wasn't working for me and I think it was because I I went and stuck this down and then this was in mirrored cardstock and then these were obviously not and they were quite matte and a bit, not dull, but I guess, well, dull in terms of, you know, against the, the shininess of the silver. So something just wasn't feeling right and then I thought, well, maybe I shouldn't have done it green. Anyway, I stopped that one. I'm going to keep it. I will figure something out. But then I redone it again in white. And also what I've done is I've added acetate to the top piece as well. So we got up to this part and I left this without the acetate. I've added acetate to this one. So there is now two levels to it. Um, and I actually think I prefer it. So if, you know, again, a lot of you just watch my tutorials all the way through. Before you go to stick down the final side, which is obviously this one um, in, yeah, yeah, it's this one here. You want to stick acetate on that one, okay? So just exactly the same way as I showed you before, so there's nothing um, difficult there. But I, I like the way it moves, um, and I just like that there's two layers. So that's all that I've changed, the colour, and added that piece of acetate, and I will, I'll do something with this, I'm not quite sure yet, but it will not, definitely not get wasted. Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut all these pieces. Um, the pop out, sh pop up, no, is it the, yeah, the floating shadow box card that I done, um, that was so popular, loads of you liked it, and I've kind of reverted back to that in terms of the colours and the palette that I used, and I just adore the Dovecraft mirrored card stock, so this is, some of this is the mermaids and unicorns, um, was it mermaids and unicorns? There's, there's like the pinks and stuff here and then I've also used the holographic but I'll share all those links and they are on my Amazon storefront. So I've already gone and stuck down these bits. I've done the fish, goldfish is on the very back and then these three are on the inner acetate. Now on the top and I'm going to add a few more bits underneath. So I've got my seaweed here and I'm going to have, I really like her with the shell, that's how I done it on that other card that I done but I do like that kind of arrangement there. This is going up here which just pops so well with that white behind it. And then I'm going to have him on this side, but I'm going to also then have a piece of green seaweed here, just to kind of fill all of that bottom area, like so. And then these pieces are going to stick inside and just poke down there but underneath the acetate. Once I bring this up closer and you see it all, it will obviously look much better, but I'm gonna stick these together, stick all of that down, and then we can finish with our mats and layers for the front and the inside there. Okay, so that's everything stuck down, and you can really now see all the different layers to that card. I think it looks great. I love all the shine that comes off of this. It really does look like almost like a fish tank kind of effect. Um, it's really neat. Everything about it I just really love. Okay so next you just want to finish off your mats and your layers. So the very front I have got these two here because obviously when this now goes flat this is five by seven so I've just done my normal mats and layers so this is a piece of four and three quarters by six and three quarters and then this piece to go on top is four and a half by six and a half so those are going to go over the top i've kept the same paper just to you know keep it all matching 
Okay, so that's the front. It's going to stay very, very simple. It's probably just going to have this happy birthday die on top. And this is the one I picked up recently from the works. And again, I'll share all these links because whenever I've done something like a pop-up style, where it's got a lot of work inside, keep the front really plain because when this is displayed, it will be displayed open like this. Everybody's going to see this. Nobody's really going to see that. So that's what I kind of do anyway, because it seems a shame to spend so long on the front and then no one really see it. And then this is to go inside here, and this is where I'm going to write my message. Um, this piece is, this area is four by seven. So I think this was three and yeah, three and three quarters by, it should be six and three quarters. So that piece is going to go there. Again, I'm keeping that same paper throughout just to tie everything together. This piece is a lot smaller because I wanted to have a thicker frame. So this piece here is three by five and three quarters that is going to go there. So you see I've got a thicker frame. I just thought that looked quite nice. And then I've just die cut another little seahorse in the mirrored kind of tealy colour there. And I just thought he'd be quite nice. I might have him up there actually so he's not right against the mermaid when it closes. So I'm going to stick all that down. Okay, so that's that bit done there. And just, I love it. I really, really love this. Again, it's this die set, it's just, I know quite a lot of you have purchased this and um, you've been emailing me saying how much you've been enjoying it. So I think to do another card tutorial just to give you more inspiration again on how to use this, it's just a really fun die set to use. And I don't think I actually showed you it, it's this one here. It's the first edition, um, this is the Under the Sea. Um, and um, yeah, love everything about it. And then for the seaweed, I love this one. I just think it works really well. And this is from the, I think this is Woodland. Yeah, Woodland. Again, both first edition, all over on my Amazon storefront. And I'll share all the links in my blog as well. There you have it, guys. A really lovely, very straightforward five by seven card from the front. But when they open it up, just look at all that wonderfulness inside. And I just thought I did say I was going to cover that, which I definitely want to do. So I'm going to quickly add that strip. Okay, there we go. That even transforms it even more. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. And yeah, it's up to you whether you want to have your message there. You may want to continue your theme. And like I said, right on the back there. But I just love how it all folds flat and then pops up. So there is my modern update of this very vintage style here. And um, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. I think they've turned out really nice. So I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial. Um, if you have, please give me a thumbs up as always and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.